Happy Christmas, everyone. I hope you're having a great Christmas day and a great celebration. Uh, we thought we'd do things slightly different for our preach today. Uh, we're going to take one verse, which is about the coming of Jesus, and four of us are going to do it between us. So, so before you panic, um, we're not going to take uh, 20 minutes each like we normally do, or even more than that. Um, we're just going to take a couple of minutes to unpack this verse. But the verse is from Isaiah chapter 9 from the Old Testament, talking prophetically about Jesus coming. And it says in uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 9 verse 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government, the authority, will be on his shoulders. And Isaiah goes on to say, And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And we're just going to take each of those names given to Jesus as we celebrate his coming. We're going to take it between us. So I'm going to kick it off. Then I'm going to hand on to Joyce so you get an upgrade straight away. Then we're going to go to Dustin and then we're going to finish and Jody's going to do the last leg of the relay. So are you ready? Good. I'll begin then. So we're uh, one of the phrases given to Jesus, one of the names is Wonderful Counselor. Isn't that fantastic? Jesus is a wonderful counsellor. I'm a big fan of counselling. I think for most of us, actually, we've got issues going on at the moment in our lives or issues from our past that impact on our behaviour, quite often negatively. And it's really helpful to have someone to speak into those and to point us in a better direction. And Jesus is able to do that. And in the book of Isaiah, at the time of Isaiah, um, a, a common thing for a king in Israel is they would have a group of advisors or counsellors and uh, it would be a, a, a known respected group of people who would give counsel or advice to the king and in the book of Proverbs that's why it talks about that it says in Proverbs 11 verse 14 it says for lack of guidance a nation falls but victory is won through many counsellors Proverbs 24 verse 6 says surely you need guidance to wage war and victory is won through many counsellors and so into that context, um, Isaiah speaks prophetically and says God is going to send his son and he is going to be the best counsellor, the best advisor you could ever have. He's going to bring the greatest wisdom. Actually, a good uh, translation of this would be astonishingly good. Now, I don't know if you've ever uh, thought about having counselling or, or, or gone to a counsellor. Who wouldn't want to go to a counsellor who is astonishingly good? good. And when Jesus comes and shines his light and his love into our lives, when we uh, listen to his voice, we get astonishingly good counselling to point our way into the fullness that God has for us. It's great stuff, isn't it? Joyce, come and take us on. Thank you, Ian. Um, well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us online today. And I am carrying on as this child who is born and the son who is given to us is the mighty God. Now the term mighty God in this verse doesn't refer to the unlimited power of God that's recorded in the Bible over and over again. Rather, it refers to God as a warrior, the God who fights for us. And in the Old Testament, his name would be Jehovah El Shaddai. And as I did a bit of my research, because unlike Ian, it doesn't flow naturally for me, um, as I did a bit of my research, uh, I found out that the word, the name of God, El Shaddai, is used most in the Bible in the book of Job. And you, well, I don't know if you know the story of Job, but Job suffered a great deal. He lost his family, he lost his possessions, and he lost his health in a very short period of time. And he suffered for a great deal, for a long time, and uh, maybe you're suffering for a long time. Maybe you're thinking you have something in your life that you've been trying to deal with for a long time that doesn't seem to be working out. But he suffered so long that his one surviving family member, his, his wife, told him, why don't you turn your back on God? He's clearly turned his back on you. Why are you still hanging on to this? Thankfully, Job didn't turn his back on God. He leaned into God and he cried out. And for the first time in a really long time of suffering, Job cried and said, where are you? What are you doing? Why aren't you changing my circumstance? And God answered Job, not in the way that we expected. He didn't come with answers to the questions that Job asked. God came and said, Job, you've asked me questions and now it's my turn to ask you. And for the next three or four chapters of Job, verse after verse, God goes ahead and says, were you there? 
when I put the foundations of the earth in place? Were you there when I set the stars on their path? Were you there when I told the ocean how far it could go? Does the eagle fly because of your wisdom? And he goes on and on and on and shows Job how powerful he is, how mighty he is. And by the end of it, Job was humbled. He said, I can only put my hand over my mouth. I am sorry that I questioned you. I can only trust you. I've only heard of you before, and now I have known you. God restored Job. And I don't know about you, but I can understand Job questioning God. I can understand that I go through stuff and I say, why aren't you doing something about this, God? You're supposed to be mighty. Maybe you're like me and you're also questioning. But what I see that God did here, when he displayed, when he came to Job, he didn't answer his questions, he displayed himself. He said, this is who I am. And what that did to Job is it restored Job's reference for who God is. And today I just feel like, um, as God displayed this power to Job, the very power that he's displayed, his creative power, his redeeming power. After Job understood who God is and that reverence was restored, then God came and restored Job. And that power of God is what he took and he placed in Jesus, that baby in a manger 2,000 years ago, the saving power of God. And that's why we call Jesus the mighty God, the redeeming God, the saving God. So how about this Christmas, you and I, um, instead of looking at our circumstances, how about we turn our attention back to God and choose to stand in awe of Christ again, choose to welcome him into our homes and our hearts and allow his redeeming and saving and conquerable power to work in and through us again. And I'm going to hand over to, jo to Dustin <laughs> to take us through the next bit. Well, amen and amen. Ooh, that was some good stuff there, guys. Uh, it is my privilege where it says, how comforting is it that in Isaiah it says, his name shall be called, you know, what we've just heard, but also everlasting father. Now, some of you may be just like me when you hear the word father or dad, your mind goes someplace and it, it might not be about a place of comfort or warmth or safety, where for me, when I think about father, I think of drunkenness or being late or being handed off one weekend a month. So when I hear everlasting father, my mind doesn't go to Jesus. But it's so locked in there in the scripture of what fathering really is. And now in Isaiah, Isaiah, he was a little obsessed with the concept of eternity, that when it says everlasting father, it is the father for all eternity. And that's not in just from now onwards, that's onwards to backwards. It's, it's eternity in both directions. That God is always our Father, and He gave us His only Son, Jesus, to father us as well. And that's the aspect of fatherhood, the, the things of shepherding us, affirming us, to be the warrior, when we need someone to fight on our side, to be our counselor, to give us wisdom as a father would to their child. And so it, it, it warms my heart to think that God saw all this from the very beginning, that he knew us today, 2,000 years on, but today that Jesus is still the everlasting father. That when I need someone to fight for me, I got somebody. When I need somebody to counsel me, I got somebody. When I just need a dad, I got somebody. And that's what I'm here today to tell you, Jesus is our everlasting father. I'm gonna leave it off to Jody to finish us off. Thanks, Dustin. And so we finish with Prince of Peace. Now, Prince of Peace, kind of can sound a bit weak, if I'm honest, after all of that. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. Because I kind of imagine a 1960s hippie in LA, like just kind of cross-legged on the floor with his band flower power bandana going, Prince of Peace, man. And I don't think that's what it is. In fact, I know for a fact that's not what it is. And when you look at the, the phrasing, Prince of Peace, the original there is Sar Shalom. And that word Sar that we use for prince is more like a captain, a ruler, a commander in the army. So kind of a picture of a strong leader, um, not some weak guy sat cross-legged on the floor. And, and that word Shalom, 
And we, you maybe have heard that before. It's a very common, regular Hebrew greeting, shalom. And in this instance, I don't think Isaiah was saying he's going to be the commander, the chief of greetings. I think shalom means more than just a greeting. And it's about this peace uh, that God can bring. And when we say peace, we don't just mean absence of war. The word shalom is way more than that. The word shalom uh, it refers to all kinds of peace. It's a, a wholeness, um, a, a welfare, a physical well-being, health, prosperity, mental and emotional stability. It's kind of this, this whole kind of peace and wholeness uh, that we have in the word shalom. And I love that. So he's, the, he's basically... Prince of Peace is the captain of shalom, the captain of peace, the captain of wholeness and well-being and health and all that is good. And so we get this idea that no matter what area of life, he is the captain of peace in that. And he's the captain of peace, he's the prince of peace who, who restores peace. He brings shalom in lots of different ways. In, in one of the main ways, when we talk about Christmas, Jesus coming to earth as a baby, he brings peace to our relationship with God. He restores that relationship with God. He's the captain, the leader who brings peace between me and you and God. And he brings peace to, to nature, to the world, and he brings peace to our relationships with one another. And so through Jesus, the captain of our peace, the leader of our peace, he, he brings this wholeness and this shalom to life. Isn't that cool? He does that. He, that ma no matter how we define different areas of our life, he can bring that peace. And so often Jesus uh, gave peace freely. He says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And as we read about Jesus' lifetime after he's born and as he goes into ministry as, an, as a 30-year-old man, he, he often talks about go in peace and I leave you in peace. He commanded people to go in peace. He lavished peace upon people. And he's saying, Shalom, I am the captain of your peace. Where there's disturbance, where things are out of order, I bring peace to your health, to your emotional well-being, your mental well-being to your circumstances, to this world, I bring peace. And then interestingly, a few years ago, and I find this really interesting, those who know me, but scholars were looking at the, the word picture of the, word, the Hebrew word shalom. And they looked at the pictures in that and they realized that the, the word pictures actually say peace that destroys the authority of chaos. So definitely not a 60s hippie. This is a powerful commander of peace who destroys the authority of chaos. Wow. And so we have this captain of peace who can come into any chaotic situation and bring his shalom, bring his peace. And so here we have a picture in these few moments we've had together of who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Let's just read those verses from Isaiah again. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Astonishingly Good Counselor. He will be called Mighty God, El Shaddai, the one with power. He'll be called Everlasting Father, the Father for all eternity, and Prince of Peace, the leader, the captain of our peace, which destroys the authority of chaos in our lives. That's who he is. His name is Jesus, but he's all of those things. And so this Christmas, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus today, as we remember that incredible eternal event that took place, when we think of Jesus, remember, he's not just a baby in a manger. He's a wonderful counselor. His mighty God, his everlasting Father, and his Prince of Peace. And he was born for us, for you and me. Shall we pray together? Father God, we thank you for your son Jesus who was born, who came from heaven to earth. 
We thank you that he is Jesus, God with us. And he is so much more. He's our wonderful counselor. He's our mighty God. He's our everlasting father and our prince of peace. And Father, I pray for each one of us where we need to lean into to who you are today, where we need to lean into you being our wonderful counselor or maybe our mighty God or maybe our everlasting father or maybe our prince of peace, that you can be all those things and you are all those things. Lord, may we receive this Christmas a greater measure of who you are. Would you deepen our understanding as we draw near to you today and celebrate your birth? I pray we would see you more clearly and know you more dearly than ever before. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of Jesus. We celebrate today. Amen. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy Christmas. Enjoy. And I look forward to seeing you in the new year.